Hi everyone, The Lone Wolf here and welcome back to the Sunday Recap, my weekly vlog where I talk a bit about my last week in games. And as always, we'll start with EVE Online, which has been a pretty calm week, I would say, in EVE Online. It has in fact been a pretty calm week for me in general. Uh, I took a bit of a break and I basically tried to focus on resting up in the last week and so in EVE Online I took it easy and I did a little bit of exploration at the start of the week uh, in a Mars space that's really very relaxing uh, to me personally. There's not a lot of players out there at the moment and as a result I'm finding a lot of data sites and honestly the drop rates in those uh, seem to be pretty good. I found a lot of those new items for industry, found quite a few decryptors, only a couple of empty or one carbon um, uh, I uh, runs as well on, on these data sites, but in general, I'm really happy uh, with the return that I'm getting there for, well, not too much effort. Data sites are pretty quick, uh, especially when you're using a microbe drive to close the distance. And then for the combat sites, it's again been uh, dominated by vigils, which I think some people aren't too comfortable uh, running. I can imagine that, in fact, I don't like to run them in my Ishtar. I feel the tank is a little bit too flimsy, so I always switch to the Gila and then run the vigils that way. Uh, not as much luck when it comes to the drops this week uh, for the combat sites but in general definitely uh, a lot of fun for me when it comes to exploration and a decent amount of, uh, of return for my effort as well. Uh, then in the second part of the week I actually moved some more stuff from the stations to the trade hubs and I in fact cleared another station of stuff and moved everything into Amar. Uh, there's another one that I still have to do that's like 8 or 10 gems out from Amar where there's a lot of stuff in it and uh, that's going to take a little bit of effort for me to consolidate all of that in Amar itself uh, but uh, overall I'm pretty happy with the progress that I'm doing there I am trying to consolidate my holdings you could say so that I can make them a little bit more liquid and and move them uh, through the market a little bit more efficiently so that's a project that I've been working on as well and then in the last part of the week I've just mostly been doing my PI um, up until uh, the point where we went uh, with uh, with the skill points for killing a couple of NPCs. I kept doing that as well, but afterwards, I think the last part of the week, we went to Proving Grounds again. Uh, that's one that I tend to skip at the moment. I'm not doing the Proving Grounds, uh, but yeah, all right. I'm still enjoying my daily sessions of EVE Online, although they're pretty short at the moment. And I'm looking forward to well, CCP actually uh, deploying some of the new stuff and actually yeah, giving us more details on how everything is going to, uh, to work and evolve for EVE Online. So it's not like I'm uh, not playing the game at the moment, but it's definitely in maintenance mode and I don't think I have to make videos on exploration runs in a Mars space every single week. You guys have seen that plenty of times and so yeah, we're basically uh, toning that down until there's like a new goal or new stuff uh, to explore and to bring to you guys. And that left me with uh, quite a bit of time uh, on my hands and so I decided to pick up a game that I've been uh, uh, looking at uh, for a very long time. It's called Grey Goo. It's a very old school real time strategy. I actually saw a couple of videos on it when it first came out and they had pretty positive reviews. Uh, I put it on the wish list, but I never really found the, the time uh, or the right time I would say to uh, pick it up. But uh, yeah, last week was that time. It was on sale uh, on Steam. I think like a 60 or 75 percent off or something like that picked it up for like seven euros uh, or just uh, below that and uh, it's it's a very classical real-time strategy so if you like that sort of thing um, and it is on sale honestly I already played through the campaign there's not that much replayability of course not like we're gonna do uh, lots of multiplayer games or anything like that with Grey Goo but um, you know if you like that sort of thing uh, for uh, like less than 10 bucks I think it is uh, uh, worth it to pick that up because it is like that super classical real-time strategy feeling of you build up your base try to get some defenses up and running because the enemy is going to keep sending wave after wave of uh, enemies to test your defenses and then you build up your forces go after the uh, objectives uh, with resources on the map that you can then start to mine and things like that research upgrades although those are pretty limited in general uh, but it's it's really uh, very very focused on that old school RTS feeling
going and I absolutely uh, love that. Not a super special story I played through the campaign uh, but it's definitely really cool as well in another aspect is that you're playing with three different factions. First you get the Betas which are like the, the aliens uh, that uh, the story starts out with. Then uh, the second faction which well, I'll spoil it, it's so old I don't think that that matters too much but it's the humans uh, that actually use drone technology uh, in order to uh, dominate the battlefield and then finally uh, as the grey goo as the goo faction itself that has a very unique playstyle that I personally really enjoyed and loved with basically endless resources as well a very big advantage for that faction and a couple of decently challenging and fun missions uh, to uh, to break as well so overall uh, very very fun game if you like that uh, typical old school RTS feeling and uh, a lot to explore because all of the different factions have their own unique build styles play styles uh, advantages and disadvantages as well although it's all of course in that typical uh, heavy tank uh, small scouts uh, flying units uh, you also have some um, like cloaking tech and things like that which for the grey goo is actually really overpowered uh, that helped me through a lot of uh, sticky situations could build up patrols I would never get attacked but I would take out uh, enemy scouts and things like that uh, but uh, to me at least uh, grey goo was definitely a worthy pickup on sale I wouldn't want to pay full price for that but I think if you can like grab it below 10 bucks or something like that that it is absolutely worth it because you you do have fun uh, playing through that campaign and uh, you know following that story a little bit that is rather tropey pretty uh, predictable of course but you know it was a very fun experience that was on my radar for a very long time I think I saw a couple of videos when the game was first announced and I was like yeah that looks really interesting um, but uh, and I put it on my wish list, but I, as I've said, never really uh, found the right time to uh, to get started on that. And this week was the right time. So I also had uh, quite a lot of fun playing through the campaign of Grey Goo last week. And that was my last week in games, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time.